Pretty soon I wanted to smoke and asked the widow to let me, but she wouldn't. She said it was a mean practice and wasn't clean, and I must try not to do it anymore. That is just the way with some people. They get down on a thing when they don't know nothing about it. Here she was a bothering about Moses, which was no kin to her, and no use to anybody being gone, you see, yet finding a power of fault with me for doing a thing that had some good in it. And she took snuff, too. Of course, that was all right, because she'd done it herself. Oh, I Miss Lofton. I was wondering if I could smoke some snuff. I don't want you smoking no snuff. Snuff is a bad practice. No good Christian smokes snuff. But I want to be civilized, and I want to smoke some snuff. <sighs> I do like me some snuff. <laughs> Then she told me all about the bad place, and I said I wished I was there. She got mad then, but I didn't mean no harm. All I wanted was to go somewheres. All I wanted was a change. I weren't particular. She said it was wicked to say what I said. Said she wouldn't say it for the whole world. She was going to live so as to go to the good place. Well, I couldn't see no advantage in going where she was going, so I made up my mind I wouldn't try for it. But I never said so, because it would only make trouble and wouldn't do no good. Now she had got a start, and she went on and told me all about the good place. She said all a body would ever have to do there was go around all day long with a harp and sing, forever and ever. So I didn't think much of it, but I never said so. I asked her if she reckoned Tom Sawyer would go there, and she said not by a considerable sight. I was glad about that, because I wanted him and me to be together. I went and told the widow about it, and she said the thing a body could get by praying for it was spiritual gifts. This was too many for me, but she told me what she meant. I must help other people and do everything I could for other people and look out for them all the time and never think about myself. Now, Hug, for Christians, there's a good place and there's a bad place. Is Tom Sawyer going to be in a good place? I reckon he ain't. Then I want to go there. I want to go to the bad place. Hush your mouth, boy. I don't know about you, but I'm going to the good place. Where did Douglas? I prayed and prayed and nothing happened. Well, you can't pray for yourself, boy. you got to pray for other people. Well, says Buck, a feud is this way. The man has a quarrel with another man and kills him. Then that other man's brother kills him. Then the other brothers on both sides goes for one another. Then the cousins chip in, and by and by everybody's killed off, and there ain't no more feud. But it's kind of slow and takes a long time. Next Sunday, we all went to church, about three mile, everybody a horseback. The men took their guns along, so did Buck, and kept them between their knees or stood them handy against the wall. The shepherdsons done the same. It was a pretty ornery preaching, all about brotherly love and such like tiresomeness, but everyone said it was a good sermon and they all talked it over going home and had such a powerful lot to say about faith and good works and free grace and pre destination, and I don't know what all, that it did seem to me to be one of the roughest Sundays I had run across yet. Well, did you want to kill him? Of course I did. Why? What did he do to you? Well, he never really did anything, but I want to kill him because of feud. What's a feud? You know what a feud is? Where are you raised? No. Well, a feud is when someone kills someone in another family. Then people in the other family kill someone in the other family. And it just turned out to be one big conflict. My people, let me tell you about brotherly love. You need to respect each other and be there for each other. I like this brotherly love. <laughs> Well, he ain't come back since, and they ain't looking for him back till this thing blows over a little. For people thinks now that he killed his boy and fixed things so folks would think robbers done it. And then he'd get Huck's money without having to bother a long time with a lawsuit. People do say he weren't any good to do it. Oh, he's sly, I reckon. If he don't come back for a year, he'll be all right. You can't prove anything on him, you know. Everything will be quieted down then, and he'll walk into Huck's money as easy as nothing. It was Jim's voice. Nothing ever sounded so good before. I run along the bank a piece and got aboard, and Jim, he grabbed me and hugged me, and he was so glad to see me. He says, Laws bless you, child. I is right down sure you's dead again. Jack's been here. He says he's reckon you's been shot, case you didn't come home no more. So I just this minute is starting to raft down towards the mouth of the creek. So to be all ready for to shove out and leave soon as Jack comes again and tells me for certain you is dead. Lawsy, I is mighty glad to get you back again, honey. 
We were gonna look for Jim and Huck, but if we find Huck, Hap's gonna stir up some legal trouble, so we ain't looking for Huck, just Jim. So they shook it, one after the other, all around and cried. The judge's wife, she kissed it. Then the old man, he signed a pledge, made his mark. The judge said that it was the holiest time on record or something like that. Then they tucked the old man into a beautiful room, which was the spare room, and in the night sometime he got powerful thirsty and clumb out to the front porch and slid down a stanchion and traded his new coat for a jug of forty rod and clumb back again and had a good old time. And towards daylight he crawled out again, drunk as a fiddler, and rolled off the porch and broke his left arm in two places, and was most froze to death when somebody found him after sunup. I am an honorable judge, and a righteous man, very smart. Judge, I just want to say, I'm a changed man, and I don't want my boy.